Okay, so, so far we had some fun with these series where you have access to values of pi and log of 2 that you didn't know about. But we also observed from the computer calculation that this series converges really, really slowly. So I'll give you a theorem about alternating series that uh, will allow you to figure out what's going on. So I'll say alternating series theorem. And it's for this. Suppose we have an alternating series which means the summation looks like n equals to 1 through infinity of negative 1 to the nth power uh, let's put let, let, let's start from 0 of a n with a n non-negative, okay? So because a n is a positive thing, mostly like a positive thing, and, and this makes it alternate the signs, it's called an alternating series. Now this one is the one that starts from positive, but you could also have something that starts from negative, in which case it will be starting from one, okay? Yeah. But uh, it's just a way to say you have some series that alternates. So uh, once, once you accept that that's like the general form that we're talking about when we say alternating series, uh, we have two conditions. If number one, limit n going to infinity of a n is zero, and number two, limit n going to no, not the limit. Uh, number two, if a n plus one is less or equal to a n, in other words, the the terms have to become smaller and smaller. Okay. If these two things are met, if these two conditions are met, then the series converges. That's a theorem about alternating series. Moreover, the truncation, the truncation of the series, let's say you truncate it at the nth term, okay? So you you start from the very first term, you add until you have some big N and you stop right there, okay? Which is what we do when we do it in a computer. You can't go for infinity, you have to stop somewhere, right? It could be a million or a billion. We could do the billion, but I assume that we can do that, okay? Uh, in that case, uh, has error at most a capital N plus one. So the maximum error that it can have of the actual series is the next term. Now, I'm not going to give you a formal proof. Rather, I'll show you the graphical proof because the graphics actually explains everything. Okay. So here's how you think. Uh, and I'll, I'll just use this one as an example. Okay. Suppose I have this alternating series. Now let's see if this alternating series satisfies that condition. Uh, does each of these terms go to zero? As you have one fifth, one sixth, one seventh, what's the limit of that? It becomes zero, right? Each individual ones, not the sum. Okay? The sum, sum of everything it gets closer and closer to log of two, but, but each individual things that you add, these go to zero. So the first condition is met. Now, if you look at the absolute values of these series, you have one and one half and one third. Is it decreasing? Are the terms decreasing if you 
take the absolute value? Yeah. So that's true uh, because these, these are like without the signs. It's, it's the, this makes it alternate. So when we talk about this one, we're really talking about the absolute value of these terms, okay? So the absolute value is decreased. So it exactly meets these conditions. So once you see what happens with this, then you can kind of see what happens in general. Okay, so let's think about this. You start from zero, and then let's say you just go for one. What does that mean? That means you're adding by one, plus one, and you're here at one. I'm making it quite big so that it's easier to see. But then you have to do minus one half, right? So what do you do? You go back. Subtract one half, you land here. And then you go plus one third, so it's something like here, plus one third. And then you come back by one fourth, minus one fourth. Right? And it goes back and forth and back and forth. That's the jump. See, see what is this value? It's the sum of all these jumps. You're jumping back and forward and then back, forward and then back. So you're adding one, that's the first jump. You subtract one half, that's the second jump. You jump forward, you jump backwards, jump forward, jump backwards. Now, do you see that this converges? It better be because it's getting closer and closer to something. It's getting closer and closer to some value. So you're immediately convinced by this picture that it must converge. right? So that's, that's this, this theorem. It converges. Okay? And you can write this mathematically. Now, moreover, the truncation has error at most a capital N plus 1. Yeah. Oh, by the way, this picture actually gives you an idea of what the value of log of 2 is. See, uh, log of 2 better be less than 1 but bigger than 0.5, right? And uh, according to this picture, it seems to be left of the half. Half of 0.5, at the midpoint of 0.5 and 1 is 0.75, so it's slightly less than 0.75. So it's something like a 0 0.69 something. Okay. So that's the actual value of log of 2. Okay. And you can just look at it graphically. All right. Uh, but uh, there's this log of 2 value. But we only have the approximation of free trunking. So that, that here's the question. What if we did plus one-fifth and subtracted minus one-sixth and stopped right here, right here. Now, the actual value will be somewhere here in between this, right? What's the maximum difference between your, your truncation at negative, so if you stop right here, right, and the actual value? What's the maximum difference? One-seventh. It should be the next one, one-seventh, because in this picture, every time you jump, you jump over the target. See, there's a target you always go over. You, you pass by the, the target. So because if you moved one sixth and you pass by the target and you know that the one seventh is going to pass the target again, then one seventh will be the maximum difference between your actual value and your approximation by truncation. You see that? All right. Now here's a reason why we had to do billions of terms in order to get a meaningful approximation of pi. Look, if we stopped at a million terms, so that's like if let's say we stopped at one million and one. One million and one. Okay? I don't I don't even know if it's plus or minus. Let's say it's minus, it looks like it's minus. Okay, so if if you have this, uh, then what's the error if you add it from here to there? What's how how similar are you to the pi? So let's say you did this and you multiply by 4. Then the error will be the next term, which is 1 over 1 million and 3. And then you're multiplying by 4, so this is the error. Hey, that's not even a million, 1 million. So you're only going to get like five digits of accuracy, which is what we found. When we did a million, we only got five digits after the decimal point of accuracy. That's why. Okay. On the other hand, the arctangent of one half and one third converged much fast, faster. Why? 
because when you have x minus 1 over 3, x cubed plus 1 fifth, x to the fifth, and you keep going like that, then when you plug in 1 half here, 1 half cubed becomes really small. 1 half to the fifth becomes really, really small. Right? So the error will be quite small. Right? So uh, in fact, although this only applies to alternating series, we have lots of examples of alternating series. Uh, the sine and cosine we did last time, it was an alternating series, right? And you remember how I did the approximation of sine of 0 0.1? How, that, how did I do that? I just plugged it into x minus 1 over 3 factorial x cubed plus 1 over 5 x to the fifth. And I only truncated here, right? And I plugged in 0 0.1 here and 0 0.1 here. What's the error there? The error is the next jump. So if you think about what this is, this is 0 0.1 to the fifth power, which is 1 out of 100,000, times one, 1 over 5 factorial, that's 120. So that's like 10 million. So you're going to have, like, I think it's six digits of accuracy if you do that. So I knew that just computing this much, these two terms, will give me the approximate value of sine of 0 0.1 accurate to six decimal places. So that's how I knew. Right? So uh, that's like the addition to the magic I tried to perform, although I had some glitch, but yeah. So that's, that's what it is, okay? So that's the alternating series.